second. Let me just exit this one. Cool. So I, I feel like I, I should make a disclaimer. I realize I see other people making these disclaimers. And uh, I should say that this is uh, not financial advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> cryptocurrencies are very extremely volatile. You can lose all of your money. Um, I hold some Z Classic and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And, um, and I also can't talk about uh, any exchanges which may or may not support uh, any coins. So, <clears throat> so basically, yeah, we can get started here. And let's see, this is me. And okay, so Bitcoin private. Uh, yeah, privacy is, is our mission. Uh, we're open source. We uh, have some wallets and mining pools and miners and websites. And we started, I basically sort of floated the idea to the Z Classic community uh, around December 14th, so about two months ago. And we have about 30 active developers so far. Uh, we How long use, does it take you to get 30 developers? Um, usually six weeks or something. Um, yeah, so hopefully, I mean, this is why, why we're here is because we need developers, so this is exciting. Um, we use GitHub, um, and you know, we have a lot of pull requests, so uh, we have, there's a lot, a lot of different pieces. We have the, the full node um, software, we have uh, a, a light wallet, we have our website, so if you're good at, um, there are people that tweet me all the time that say, that say uh, I found a typo on your website, and I say, great, thank you, please make a pull request because everything is, is open source like that and run through GitHub, right? Um, <clears throat> so recently, let's see, some uh, achievements we made. We shipped a Electrum-based uh, light wallet, and it's doing uh, transparent, to transparent and uh, shielded to transparent transactions. <clears throat> we have a full node swing wallet, and the swing wallet supports all types of uh, transactions, and then we also recently have a mobile uh, wallet with Coinami. And so coming up next, we're going to add shielded transactions to Electrum, uh, hopefully integrate some, some group messaging in the Swing wallet. Uh, there's some people working on a one-click miner. And then, of course, we have the snapshot coming up in a week. So there's going to be a, we had one very successful uh, test rehearsal for the snapshot, and we're going to be running a second test rehearsal shortly. Um, and then the, the te actually, so the, in the test rehearsal, we'll have partial support for SegWit coins, uh, which, anyway, that's uh, interesting. But basically, all, all Bitcoin coins will uh, the, those unspent um, coins will be added to the Bitcoin private snapshot. And then the snapshot happens on February 28th. And then, so it, the way that the snapshot works is that um, miners are actually going to um, add new coins. Just like miners add new coins every block now, there's a, there's a block reward where there's a, it's actually called a Coinbase input. Some people confuse Coinbase, the company, with there's actually, before that in Bitcoin, there was a thing called a Coinbase, and those are the new coins that get created. And so the way that the, the Bitcoin private um, fork will happen is on top of the Z Classic blockchain, there will just be these special fork blocks where miners will be adding uh, thousands of new Coinbase inputs per block. And those, uh, those um, new coins will go to everybody that held a Bitcoin. And so uh, basically the idea for Bitcoin private, kind of the mission, is that it's, it's supposed to be peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash that is fast with low fees and also has privacy. Um, so, you know, it's what many people maybe thought uh, Bitcoin was in, in the early days. Um, and, you know, ha being fast and having low fees, um, that is, I think, pretty important for developers. When I started working on Bitcoin, uh, it, it cost maybe five cents to send a Bitcoin transaction. A lot of people were building exchanges and services, tip services and things based on that model. And now it changed from five cents to five dollars sometimes. And so uh, it kind of upended a lot of uh, a lot of business models and uh, and privacy. So um, 
you know, it, it was clear to me when I looked at what Bitcoin was that there really wasn't very good privacy by, and it almost seemed by design. And I was surprised at people sort of assuming that there was really much privacy in Bitcoin because you have this public ledger that's staying around forever. And you have to think that in the future, people will probably get really good at analysis techniques to be able to track and trace uh, you know, transactions. And if people have machine learning in 20 years, uh, you know, they might, there's a good chance they're gonna, they're gonna be able to trace those transactions, right? Um, a lot of people in the community, uh, we have people in the community who are actually very, um, you know, the privacy is a personal freedom that they like to, they fight for, and they feel like that's part of their own identity. Uh, I, personally, that's not, it's, privacy was never really a big part of my own personal identity. Um, I just know that privacy is, um, is something that, um, that makes your, that is a, is a good utility to have for any kind of money and to run any kind of business or financial service. So if you're running a business, you probably, um, all the employees probably don't know what everyone else is getting paid, right? <clears throat> and for the whole history of money, uh, it was probably pretty normal for people to expect financial privacy, uh, privacy with uh, you know their financial transactions. And only maybe in the past 20 years, I think, uh, has that sort of seemed like maybe it's not something that should you know just be by default the case. Um, and, and of course, we have this uh, this amazing community that just kind of blew up and grew uh, out of the Z Classic community. And so we just had an event in New York last week. I think this is actually from Austin uh, two weeks ago. So we're already doing events uh, all around the country and uh, lots of people are showing up and, and flying into them and participating. And um, yeah, so I mean, we're pulling a bunch of things that I think, I think Zcash actually made a lot of great choices. One of the, so Zcash, um, innovated on top of Bitcoin and they added privacy. They also made a few other choices uh, where they tried to democratize mining a little bit by using an EcoHash mining algorithm. And so that's what we use uh, in, in Z Classic and what we're going to use in Bitcoin Private. Um, I've actually, as sort of a, a personal story, I've actually met uh, somebody from Iran uh, told me that they, uh, he, he and all his friends Mind Z Classic, uh, and I was really surprised to, to find out. You know, he told me he's like, "Oh, wow, you know, you made Z Classic. We, I mind that." And um, you know, my first question was like, "Well, why don't you mind? Why don't you mind Z Classic? You know, why don't you mind Bitcoin?" And he said that they can't import uh, the Chinese mining hardware, right? So they have a lot of um, low-cost electricity, but they they have to use general-purpose GPUs. And then I said, "Well, why don't you mind Zcash?" And he said, "Well, we don't want to pay." This 20%, you know, tax right to this American corporation, and so, um, and then you know, and he was saying that they actually had this period they lived through, where all of their money was confiscated, and so when he teaches his friends that you can actually hold your money on a, a private key that you control and no one can take that away, it's a really powerful idea to him, his, him and his friends and, and other people all around the world. Um, oh wait, I messed this up. All right, go back here. And then uh, sort of the last uh, sort of take on, you know, where uh, sort of in the future, what I think will be ex exciting for Bitcoin private is um, trading pairs. So right now we have this case where lots of people, when they are, I, I think they're gonna, there's gonna be a future where there's thousands or millions of tokens. Uh, some of them will be representing derivatives. We're gonna have this, Petro token thing in Venezuela coming up, and there's going to be the crypto ruble, and there's going to be all kinds of other uh, tokens. And um, you know, right now you have to, if you're sending your money in Ethereum or Bitcoin to an exchange, that's public. And um, and I, I think there are actually cases where people are able to observe with large Bitcoin wallets that people are when they deposit that Bitcoin from a particular wallet into an exchange they may be buying some altcoin XYZ, right? And so that gives everybody the opportunity to front run uh, the, you know, those, those, those people. And so, um, so you know, privacy, I think, makes a lot of sense as something you would want in a trading pair. Uh, 
And so uh, now we'll get into some of the sort of more, a little bit more technical pieces. Uh, we can talk about, we talked a little about block time, block size, the proof of work, the block headers, the transactions, shield of transactions and difficulty adjustments. So, uh, so Bitcoin private has two and a half minute block times on average, and each block is about, uh, is two megabytes. And so, um, <coughs> so you get, uh, it's funny, it's kind of spread, yeah, it's spread out, but you get um, eight megabytes every 10 minutes, right? So, um, and then we have, so with Bitcoin, there's the SHA-256 uh, proof of work algorithm you're all probably familiar with. And then <clears throat> that was kind of a, um, you know, that, I mean, that was a choice that um, Satoshi made, but we all know that you can build application specific integrated circuits uh, to, that are way more efficient at solving that, that problem. And because Equihash uh, is memory, a little bit more memory hard and, and um, it, it makes it more difficult to write those types of, or build those types of uh, chips to get the same type of advantage. And so we have, we have um, sort of more block throughput with Zeek, Zeek Classic and Bitcoin Private but the headers are actually a little bit different. So they take a little up a little bit more space. So even though we have eight times the block size, it works out to be probably about five times the throughput in transactions. So one of the differences here is just if you look at the block header, uh, we have this, the biggest part is this big equal hash solution. And that's, uh, that's just, that's related to the different, uh, the equal hash proof of work that Z Classic and Bitcoin Private use. And if we look at the basic transactions here, this is kind of the, the difference between the transactions. So at the top part, you have the components of a basic uh, Bitcoin transaction. And what you, what you basically have is the, the inputs, right, and the outputs. Uh, there's a version number. The version can actually only either be one or, or two so far. And, um, <clears throat> and then uh, with Bitcoin private, uh, you actually have these these uh, these joint uh, uh, joint split um, components, and that's basically where the um, that's how the the shield of transactions happen when inputs or outputs are sent into uh, a, a joint split. So the the way that the, sort of the way that you can think about it is in in Bitcoin private. You can have transparent uh, transactions, right, where you see everything, and then you can have transparent to shielded. And in that case, what you will actually see is the amount that goes into the shielded transaction, right? And then once you have shielded your coins, you can send shielded to shielded, and now the amounts and the sender is all it's all private. Um, but when and then when you go back from shielded to transparent, then you will see the amount that comes out of that, right? And so, um, so this is what shielded transactions look like. And so it's just sort of going from the bottom up. Um, at the bottom, we have the ciphertext that actually contains the shielded transaction. Uh, you have the zero knowledge proof, and then you have these nullifiers and commitments, and those are basically used to um, to validate that the the, the person that controlled the, the coins was the one that created a transaction, even though um, without, without revealing any, any knowledge about who that was. And, um, and then I guess the, the anchor kind of tells you sort of where to, how to order those transactions. And then you have this VPUB old and VPUB new, and those are related to coins going in and out of the um, shielded transactions. So one of the most exciting things, I think, actually about um, shielded transactions is we have uh, in the cipher text there's 512 bytes that can kind of that can be used as an encrypted memo so there's a lot of developers in this room and i don't know of anyone that's taking advantage of that for some kind of application um, so if you can think of some kind of application where you can use 512 bytes uh, that are encrypted that you're sending uh you know to, to the receiver and we have low fees and uh you know and uh, two and a half minute blocks. So 
um, you know, if you can think of something cool that, uh, that you can build on that, then definitely, um, you know, that, that I, that's exciting. Um, so, yeah, our difficulty adjustment. I don't know why Bitcoin sticks to this every two weeks thing. It, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense to me, but, um, but Bitcoin Private uses, uh, basically has a, a, a digit shield based adjustment to adjust the, uh, the difficulty every block. So uh, there was some crazy ping ponging happening a few months ago between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, where one would become really easy and then a bunch of miners would shift to it. And then two weeks later, uh, they would shift back from, you know, to the other one and the other one would become really hard. And so there was like blocks happening really every six hours on one and then every, you know, a lot of blocks every few minutes on the other. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to have a uh, much quicker difficulty adjustment. Um, and I think this was honestly one of those things that Satoshi just kind of guessed at. If you go back and you look at the history and the Bitcoin talk uh, discussions, he, he kind of just, he didn't really have a good reason to make it two weeks. You know, it was, I think it was just a guess. And, and now after years and years, I think, you know, a big part of what we're trying to do here is, is learn from in, in practice. Um, I think what we see just works well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the community. Oh, wow, this is a uh, okay, pretty, pretty quick talk here. So, um, you know, we've, I said, yeah, 30, uh, 20, 20 plus, 30. Um, we have uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of social media activity, Twitter, Reddit, Discord, there's a the Telegram. Uh, this is like a heat map, uh, I guess, of, of like where people are coming from. And this is... Uh, this is a graph of our Twitter engagement. So we started sometime in mid-December, and that's the Bitcoin private Twitter, and that's the growth of that, and this is the growth of our Reddit, and this is the growth of our Discord channel. And uh, we, had a, we had a thing, you know, people just, uh, just step, you know, there's all types of people now joining the community. Uh, with skill sets that I, you know, I don't have. There are marketers and um, and all kinds of people that you know are writing. There's somebody made this logo. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, right? Like people, there was just kind of a you know discussion like what should the logo be, and then uh, and then somebody made a shirt, and I kind of messed up by not bringing all of you guys shirts, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, but, ne but next time, um, but. Um, you know, so we, somebody ran a thing to get, first it started out as translations. Let's try to translate the website. I don't know, I don't know exactly how many, we have a lot of, uh, it translated into a lot of different languages. And then we have these ambassadors that are um, helping to reach people in their different, uh, countries. And, um, and then this is, this is one thing that's pretty cool. I, I think is really cool. We have a Telegram and a Discord, and I think there's like 4,000 people in our Telegram, and there's a lot of noise in it. It's kind of hard to be heard. Um, and, you know, in Discord, Discord's a little overwhelming. I don't know if you've used it. There's, we try to split it up into different channels, um, so it's a little bit more uh, organized, but you kind of have to know what you're doing. So we have this thing. We actually just have a, uh, you know, support integrated right onto our website. So. I don't know. I don't even know who answers it, actually. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like somebody from the, I don't know how it works, actually. Somebody set it up and, uh, you know, people seem to like it. Um, so, yeah, I know it's, it's, I mean, I honestly, like, I, yeah, a lot of this stuff is just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing, like, most of the work for this, right? I mean, it's really amazing. I've kind of just tweeted, uh, like, hey guys, there could be a Bitcoin private. And I actually did think originally I was going to do, uh, I, I thought, okay, like I could do the code to make this fork happen. But since then there have just been like lots of people who seem like way better at it. And, um, and so they've taken over uh, at that. But so, yeah, so it, other, what was that? Oh, okay, I didn't, but um, so yeah, so so give it a try. I guess you can <laughs> see who answers the thing, and um, <laughs> and uh, and so this is kind of you know how how I see the community. We have these developers. Uh, our our mining community is amazing, and um, and then you know all the other 
parts of our community, people doing graphics and the web and the marketing and talking to wallets and partners and all kinds of organization. Um, you know, that's, that's what's really like pulling everything together. And um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much my whole talk. Um, and then I can answer some questions or whatever. So how do we, do we want to have a way we want to do the questions, Tarek, or? Community driven. Let yeah. Speak. Let the, okay. Do we need like a microphone to get them or? Uh, you know, right there. Uh, I have <coughs> Yes, so, yeah. Um, just repeat the question. Rob's going to help with the mic yeah. pull on. He's going to get your mic. We have another mic there. Um, can, we go, can we go back a few slides? Sure. The community, the community minor and the... This one? Or, yeah, let me yeah. for a bit. All right, we have... Right. Uh, Start in the front. Yeah. Hey there, that's interesting. So did you say it's going to fork Z Classic and then add everybody who owns a Bitcoin in addition to that? Right, so so the way that um, the fork is going to happen is that there's there's Z Classic is running right now, and there's some some code that's running Z Classic, and their miners mining it, and so people are going to write um, new code, and that that new code, what it will do is add a specific block height. Um, it will choose a snapshot height for Bitcoin, and then um, the people who are mining this new code, what their, what their code will do is start adding thousands of new Coinbase inputs uh, to blocks in a, sp in a special window of new blocks that are mined on, on the Bitcoin private chain, which will basically uh, split from, from Z Classic to a new blockchain, right? And so, uh, what those miners, the rules, so basically we're changing the rules, right? And the, and you can change, that's the thing is like, you know, you can change, like, for all you developers out there, like, there are a lot of ways you can change the rules for these peer-to-peer -peer crypto networks to decide what they're, they're doing, right? And so the, the rule change is, is basically going to say, um, you know, take the UTXO set from, uh, from Bitcoin and then add those as Coinbase inputs into these special blocks on Z Classic. So that's that's technically how it's going to work. And then and then that will happen for some window. And then after that window, then um, then there will be you know mining will happen in the more normal way with um, you know one Coinbase input per block. And if you own one Z Classic and one Bitcoin before the fork. You want some portion more based on so the so if you have one Z Classic before the fork, then uh, you you'll keep your Z Classic, uh, and so so you know there is a question like so Z the may, the network may split, uh, and and Z Classic will keep running under its old rules, and there and then there would be two there would be a Z Classic and a Bitcoin private. There is also a possibility. I mean, there's there's three possibilities. One is that um, all the miners might just choose that they just want to mine Bitcoin private, in which case the network won't split, but the the rules will change and all the miners will be just mining on this new set of rules, right? And then the other case is that maybe nobody will mine Bitcoin private, and and then Z Classic will just keep, you know, running as it as it was. But if you but assuming the network splits, if you held one Z Classic, then you have your Z Classic on that chain with those miners mining that chain. And then, if it splits, you also have your Bitcoin private on this other chain. So you had your, you, so then you have your Z Classic and you have your Bitcoin private. If you had one Bitcoin and one Z Classic, after the split, you would have your your one Z Classic and your one Bitcoin still, and then you would actually have two Bitcoin privates mm -hmm. because you have the one from the Z Classic and then the one from the Bitcoin. And how do you claim that? How do you claim? Well, oh, so this is what's what's kind of cool is that transparent um, addresses in Z Classic and Zcash are actually they they're the same address types as Bitcoin. So if you have a Bitcoin private key, uh, that can also be used to control a Zcash or a Z Classic or you know a Bitcoin private private key. So the same private key will is what you for, so for your Bitcoin. You have a private. If you have one Bitcoin and you have a private key that controls that Bitcoin, 
you'll use that same private key to now control your Bitcoin private. You can okay. keep the address. So. Because you keep the private key. It's the same, right, it's the same, same address. It's encoded a slightly different way. So like Bitcoin starts their addresses with a one and, um, and uh, you know, Zcash starts with theirs with a T, right? And so, and then we are talking, I actually don't even, I think that the Bitcoin private ones, I, I think we're still actually discussing. It'll, it may start with like a, like a B, P or something like that. So the address will look a little different, but there will be, you'll use the same private key. Uh, just so that we know, we can have a lot of questions. So if you raise your hand, um, we will get you a mic so you can speak and also give Rhett some time to catch his breath. So, you know, who else? Oh, so um, well, I guess from the slides, it seemed like it's, it's pretty much, I mean, the same protocol as, say, Zcash. <coughs> you're doing like a big new airdrop. Is, it, is that correct? Right. It's so, like a, I guess so it would be more correct to say. Yeah. So, so that's that's right. So, um, so we're doing we're doing this a little bit in stages. Um, so, so for those of you who don't know uh, what Z Classic is, <clears throat> no. Well, you, you mentioned Zcash, so I'll go, sort of go in. There's this this sort of uh, you kind of have to tell uh, the backstory is um, there was Bitcoin, right? And then in, in the beginning there was Bitcoin, <laughs> and and then um, and then the <laughs> Uh, the Zero Cash Electric Coin Corporation, a U.S. corporation with investors, uh, created Zcash. And they announced that they would have a 20% reward to pay their investors and to pay developers and things. 10%. Okay, so it's, it's 10% if you take that all the way out to like the year 2140, it will be 10%. But for the first four years, it's 20%. And so we're still in that four-year period, right? And so I thought, okay, uh, that seems unfair that like a few people are gonna get 20% of all this money. And so I looked at the code and I was like, well, you can just delete these 22 lines of code <laughs> and then we don't have to give them any of the money, right? And I have a white paper too. Very <laughs> yeah, I have a, it had, it was, I was pressured to make a white paper about this, and my white paper's like, you just delete the 22 lines of code, right? So, um, so I tried telling people first. I was like, you just let's just delete the code, right? And they were, and people were like, no, let's just do what they say, right? And so I actually, so then I forked. I just hit the fork button on GitHub, and then I don't even think I, I don't even think I cloned it because I just went into the editor and I deleted it right inside of the web thing in GitHub because I figured it would probably still work. And, um, and, then, and then I went on Bitcoin talk and I said like, hey guys, you could mine this instead, right? And then people were really mad. They were like, hey, you ninja launched this, <laughs> right? And I was like, I just, you know, you look, you can mine this if you want to, right? And then people got mad that like some guy started mining too much and then like other people had to mine it. And, um, you know, and so people were working on that. So, so that's the classic. So you're, you're asking like, okay, so you started. Well, I, guess, I guess I'm curious like also about the kind of motivation, right? Like you mentioned that it seemed unfair to like allocate some portion of the coins to the people who created the protocol. But doesn't it, I mean, I, I'm just curious, I guess what the motivation then is behind giving people who happen to own Bitcoin Coins sure. in this new vertical. No, it's 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 interesting. Um, so yeah, so the the people who own anyway. So I I kind of want to go just like real quick. What was, what was the original question? I want to get well, back. I guess the original question is I wanted to understand. Well, both. I wanted to understand is this really just you know the currently deployed version of Zcash with right, the right. with a different initial token distribution. Okay. So, so then the follow up question right. is is actually it's maybe even a more interesting question. I think people would find it more interesting. How did you settle on this particular token distribution as being, say, more fair than the right. Zcash? Token okay, so I want to go. So the first thing I just want to address really quickly is to now that we've explained what Z Classic is, right? So there was Z Cash, and all Z Classic is is just Z Cash without the founders reward, and so it's very similar. And then Bitcoin Private is basically in in this first iteration, it's just going to be Z Classic with with Bitcoin holders also get some of it, right? And so that seems really like, okay, well, that's, that's all it is. But there, we're doing a few things that I actually didn't talk about that are kind of interesting technically. Um, the first thing is that, so because we are adding, there's going to be more coins 
and we are actually going to be coming closer to the 21 million limit of total coins, right? Um, we have so we're going to have a lower inflation rate than, than Bitcoin has now, but we also have some questions. There's actually some really interesting game theoretical questions about what happens when we get closer to the block subsidy going down. So I, I, I want to answer both of your questions. I don't want to dwell on it too much, but um, but so what we're actually doing because we realize that we are going to have to make some choices uh, in the next few months with with Bitcoin Private. And we want Bitcoin Private not to just be a Zcash clone plus some Bitcoin. We want to actually um, add improvements to it. So what we are doing is um, we're adding a difficulty bomb to Bitcoin Private. So we're going to force the community to hard fork upgrade to something. And this is what Ethereum does. Um, I think Monero might do it. There, there's some. If Monero doesn't do that, then they definitely have the, um, it's part of the community promise that there will be hard fork to make technical upgrades. So part of the community promise for uh, Bitcoin Private is that we, as a community, will ha have some hard fork upgrade and it will happen within the next 12 months. Um, We're adding, that's what the BIP9 support is for, is so, uh, so miners will be able to signal which particular hard fork they prefer. Um, so just to, so that sort of the, that first question was, um, you know, is, is it just Zcash? And so the answer is like, right now, yes, it's very similar. Zcash minus the powers reward, but there, but we know that there's also this promise of there will be more upgrades in the future with the core mission being that we want to be, um, you know, peer to peer electronic cash that's fast and private and with low fees. Now, um, you know, how do we settle on this sort of distribution model is sort of the other question. Um, you know, I, so basically the, these Bitcoin forks were kind of a phenomenon a few months ago, right? We had Bitcoin Cash and then Bitcoin Gold and then there, then there was a bunch of them like Bitcoin God and Bitcoin Platinum and Bitcoin Rhodium and well, Super Bitcoin was a cool one, right? And, um, and, um, and so a lot of people, myself included, uh, I remember when there was Aurora coin. I don't know how many people remember Aurora, Aurora coin. coin. Yeah, Aurora yeah, coin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Iceland. <laughs> so yeah, it was like ice, everyone in Iceland got an Aurora coin or some Aurora coin, right? And, uh, and what happened was the price went up to like $200 a coin. And then everyone in Iceland was like, dude, you can just dump this thing and you get 200 bucks, right? And, it, and the price went down to 10 cents. It was like one of the earliest airdrop coins and it seemed to demonstrate that airdrop coins were just a failure, right? And that's what I, that's what a lot of people assumed Bitcoin Cash and the other Bitcoin forks would just, they would just dump because why wouldn't uh, all the Bitcoin holders just sell them as fast as possible, right? And so, uh, you know, empirically, we've kind of learned that that's not the case with Bitcoin forks. And I don't, I don't know why exactly, but, um, you know, there appears to be some utility to, to these to these Bitcoin forks, and I think one of one of the reasons is you know I kind of have my own sort of theory of of what the heck we're doing here with with crypto economics, right? And I, I look at the three pieces of technology I kind of put together are you have your public private key cryptography that's really important, right? And that was uh, you know from the 70s basically, and you have uh, your peer to peer networks, and then this this like distributed Merkle graph data set, right? And what happens is when you, you know, we already have this peer-to-peer -peer network that's running Z Classic, and what we're able to do is, um, you know, is, is include this whole network of other private key holders into our community. And so that might be the case why, you know, we, we get more, we grow and get more value as a community by just including these other, other people, right? Because um, you know, if you look at like our, our community growth charts, I mean, I talk to people who are doing like non-crypto startups and they like getting this kind of growth in a non-crypto startup is really hard, right? It's like $50 to get someone to download your app, right? And, and we didn't spend any money to get all, you know, all of these people are following us on Twitter and they're involved and engaged and, and everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I mean, that's... You know, I think that we're still learning, and it's an experiment, and it's just kind of something that we're, you know, we're all trying out. So that's that question. Yeah. yeah.
Okay, uh, thanks for taking the time to sure. and, and I have a few questions. So first, just to summarize, I guess, the, this, last thing, this last discussion. So basically you're saying, like technically, Z Classic could have achieved everything that you talked about, but and, but Bitcoin Private has the network effect of like a lot of people that would care about it because they own it, and that's the reason for Bitcoin Private. Um, I mean, that, that's a plausible, so I'm not, I don't even really know exactly why Bitcoin forks are, seem to be successful so far. I mean, that, that could be part of it. Another part of it, honestly, is that, um, it, I, like, I'm just speculating, I don't know, but, um, one thing is, is, like, I remember when, you know, okay, there was Bitcoin, right, and then, and then people made altcoins, and there's Dogecoin and Litecoin, right? And they kind of sound a little bit like Bitcoin. It's like something coin, right? And and that was sort of uh, uh, marketed in a way to the early, very you know, early crypto adopters. Now it's possible that we sort of reached the second wave of early crypto adopters. But what they know is that like there's a Bitcoin, and maybe there's a Bitcoin Cash, right? And maybe maybe they see these things as bitcoins. That could be another. So it could be that could be part of it as well. I don't know. Okay. So another question. You mentioned ASIC consistency, and uh, some like when Litecoin started, they also thought that Bitcoin is ASIC consistent. Is that like a commitment from you or from the community? Because some coins have like changed their hashing algorithm when ASICs were created for. Is that a commitment from Bitcoin Private? Is that just a nice to have for now? But if Bitcoin comes to all with Equihash, you know, minor, you, you won't be changing that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's not, re you know, it's obviously like not up to me, but um, I think that the general sense that I get from the community is that we really we like the fact that the mining has been really decentralized, and. Um, and so I think that is something that the community would like to preserve if somebody tried to build a, uh, you know, an Equihash ASIC that in, in our upcoming hard fork, they, they may decide to, hey, well, let's also throw in changing the proof of work. Um, so I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I would suspect that that would at least be seriously considered or discussed. Okay, so uh, last question. You mentioned low fees and fast transactions. Is a primary reason for this occasion. So, is that a statement that you don't believe that Bitcoin Core is carrying back, right? The segue and lightning is going to solve it in a similarly viable way or in an equally good? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so um, I, uh, I know s several of the Lightning Network developers really well. I trust them uh, a lot. and. They say don't use Lightning Network on main yet, not yet. Um, and shame, uh, shame, <laughs> right. shame. And and you know, um, and I, uh, I can I can understand, you know, I understand where people are coming from, where they they see that as being, um, you know, this sort of this off chain solution that can potentially scale really well for a lot of cases. But if you also if you look at things like um, Coinbase has. Um, a lot of um, tiny Bitcoin amounts that are actually kind of trapped because it would cost more money to move them than they're worth. And I think they have millions of dollars that are actually locked up that way. And there's no amount of SegWit or Lightning Network that can solve that, right? And so, but they will get a Bitcoin private and they'll easily be able to move and consolidate all of those on Bitcoin private. Right, so they're they're definitely um, they're definitely you know a lot of cases where just increasing the block size helps with scalability right now, and then you know like Lightning and, and Segwit aren't just a magic solution to fix all the problems. What are you gonna do with the Satoshi wallet? Oh yeah, uh, it's it's gonna stay stay where it is. I mean. Um, you know, we, it's funny, I did, I floated out the idea, did you see, you, did you see yeah. my tweet or something? Yeah, I saw that tweet. And people were getting mad, sometimes I tweet ideas, and then people were like, that's a terrible idea, delete that tweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I, you know, I thought, I thought, it, I had an idea that, uh, since Z Classic is kind of like the Satoshi of Bitcoin Private, then we could, you know, we could take the 
And see, Satoshi coins are kind of, I mean, they're kind of a liability on Bitcoin, right? Because if they ever moved, it would, it would probably freak people out because they haven't moved in so long. Um, so you have this like million, million Satoshi coins, right? Um, but I mean, they're going to stay, they're going to be, they're going to, Satoshi will get his Bitcoin prime. <laughs> so. Okay. So, following your reasoning for distribu distributing through Bitcoin, and your reasoning was similar to like growth, including them, uh, what would be your limitation, I'm curious, to doing additional uh, communities? Right. Yeah. So some people have said, like, well, why not? Why not add like Litecoin and Dogecoin? Just bring them all in, right? Um, one that I I think somebody should do that experiment. Honestly, like, I don't know what that would do. Maybe that would be the best crypto coin ever, right? Like, I I don't know. Um, I would one one issue is is actually I mean, you know, you when um, when you're there are a lot of promises in these communities that you're trying to. Uh, you know, a lot of people felt like they were made of promise one way or another, right? Like one of the big promises in Bitcoin is that there aren't more than 21 million coins, right? And then this other promise that like some people feel really strongly about is like Satoshi should get his coin, he should have his coins, right? And so, um, you know, if you tried to merge in like Dogecoin with Bitcoin and Litecoin, then well, how do you stay under the 21 million limit? And then the question is like, well, do you give you do it by percentage, and now you get like a third of a you know Bitcoin private if you're bringing in the Litecoin or whatever. And then when you start doing that kind of math, it's just too hard for a lot of people to understand. That's why like the one to one to one, you can tell that to a crowd, and generally people are like, okay, I get it. But any math that gets more complicated than that is like it gets to be pretty hard. One back here. Uh, I've got two quick questions. You said uh, when you mentioned that uh, when people are buying uh, altcoins, you can actually uh, you can use Bitcoin private because it's private. But how do you know um, when you're buying altcoins because it's all going to one public address? I mean, how do you know who's buying what? So what I was saying is like if, if there is an exchange, right? Um, let's say like Bitrix is an exchange, and if you um, right now their base pairs. They have like base pairs, so you could you could send them Bitcoin and you could trade that Bitcoin for an Ethereum or something, right? But if instead you could they had a Bitcoin private Ethereum base pair, then you could send them a private Bitcoin transaction, right? And then nobody would able be able to see who what that amount was or who it was from. And and really and that or that you sent it to, to Bitrix. And then when they received this, the Bitcoin private, if they had a Bitcoin private Ethereum base pair, then they could have a market where you could use to trade that, right? So, so that's that's what I mean, I'm just saying that like hypothetically. I'm not saying what they do, or, but you know that that was the just just a follow up question. So, so if you're doing payments and, and they want verification of the amount that was sent, if you can't see how much it was, then how do you verify? It? Um, you as the as the sender uh, and the receiver, you can verify it, but it's not um, it's not publicly visible to everyone. If you use the memo, you can use the memo function. You use the memo function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You then you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I, I apologize if you answered this, but I, I'm just not not grasping one relatively simple point here. Sure. So if I understand that there's faster block times and more goes in the blocks, and when Bitcoin had lower volume, the fees were low, and then Bitcoin's volume increased. So there, a measure of success created this unforeseen problem. So if that measure of success happens on this implementation, and you know it happens to 8x or 16x, the measure of success we see right now on Bitcoin inflating fees. Is there some mechanism other than the increase in block size and frequency of blocks, or that's the only two methods? No, that's right. So that's the only thing right now. But but you know the the, the basic idea is that we have, I mean, right now, um, you know, so few transactions. 
per Z Classic block than, than Bitcoin. There's probably, you know, 10, maybe 10 to 20 transactions per block, right? Right now that supports thousands. So we have, a, you know, a lot of room for growth, right? But if, if Bitcoin had had, even, you know, we, we have, we'll have 5x the capacity, right? So if Bitcoin had had 5x the capacity, they never would have run into that, that whole, you know, mempool clogging up, at least at that time, right? Right, but like it mitigates itself as a problem as the fees go up. It's so right, it's you, not an infinitely scalable solution to right. this problem. So, so really this has low cost fees until it succeeds and then it, just like Bitcoin, it doesn't have low cost fees anymore. Cor well, correct, and okay. except that, um, you know, basically we do, we're kind of in a way um, kicking the can down the road a little bit, right? Because we know that we have, we have this mechanism to force a hard fork and there are other ways that we can try to, um, you know, add add second layer op, like scalability solutions to that problem. So one thing, for example, if it takes us a year or two years to get to that point, um, you know, one advantage that we have is we can observe all of the things that Bitcoin is actually trying to do with SegWit and Lightning and those things, right? That that really, you know, they haven't actually. I don't. I mean, yeah, SegWit's made. Us, you know, there's a small. Uh, some small, probably improvement right in the block size, but yeah, there's no uh, right. It's not an infinitely scalable solution, but it buys us a lot of time. Makes sense. Thank yeah. you. Um, what's the initial block size or uh, initial block reward going to be for Bitcoin Private? Um, that exact number is in the white paper, um, but <clears throat> I think it's actually, I think it's going to be half of a Bitcoin Private. So right now, because uh, Z Classic actually has the same emission schedule as Bitcoin, and Z Classic was made in November 2016, so we're like a year and a half in. So right now with Z Classic, we're actually at about 85% annual yearly inflation, which is really high, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's gonna drop significantly after the fork and um, you know, I don't. I actually don't know what the effects of that will be. Uh, there will be significantly less incentive for people to mine uh, Z or Bitcoin private uh, after the fork. Um, it also means that there will be significantly lower inflation rate. So um, you know that your your coins will stay more scarce, right? Um, so it will be it will be interesting to see what what happens, and um, and we will actually be testing uh, as a Bitcoin fork one of the lowest inflation rates I think of any Bitcoin forks, and uh, uh, probably the lowest. And um, and so you know I think that we'll see we'll, we're going to have to see what that does. Um, but if you know if it's it could be I think it could be good or bad, right? I don't know. And if it's good, then you know that's that's that'll be great. We're all going to learn a lot, and it's going to be great. Um, if it's if it's bad, I think that we'll be able to um, adapt and come up with you know we'll, we'll come up with some solution. And um, you know the community obviously what we want is a stable blockchain that, that keeps operating and um, you know not having major uh, you know chain reorgs and things like that. Okay. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, sure. given the sort of the, you know uh, the fact now that there's so many like compelling like privacy tokens, right? I mean, uh, uh, there was another one. Oh, can you talk to the sorry, just so they can, the audio can get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear you. Go ahead. Oh yeah, keep talking. Keep talking. Anyway, no, my question is just like uh, basically your um, your thoughts and sort of uh, privacy, uh, how that evolves in the industry as a whole, because uh, you know in a universe of like so many so many so many more tokens, uh, I think. Uh, I'm curious to understand how you think more deeply about privacy and how, uh, you know, in all, in all these different cryptographic networks of privacy. So I actually think there's an extreme shortage of privacy-oriented coins right now. Um, I mean, you mentioned that there were a lot. I don't, I don't see that. Uh, when I look, if I look at the, you know, top 100 coins on CoinMarketCap, I mean, and I can go through them, right? But let's say, um, like, Monero is one of the top ones. Um, well, Monero is not a Bitcoin fork. Zcash is, right? But Monero's not. And Monero's really proud of the fact that they use a whole new code base. Um, but there's a lot of gotchas. And software developers that have worked really hard to understand how to integrate Bitcoin 
uh, there's a lot more work for them to figure out how to integrate Monero. And for instance, like that, I don't think that is there a Monero mobile wallet? Is there? They're working exist? on it. They're working on <laughs> they're it. Working like on it. there isn't a Mo Monero mobile wallet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's already a Z Classic and going to be a Bitcoin private mobile wallet, right? So that's like right out the gate one advantage uh, that we'll have over Monero. And then uh, Zcash, okay, well, if you want to use a uh, U.S. corporation coin that has a 20% tax, and by the way, they trademarked the name Zcash, so you can't actually use that without violating the trademark, right? Then, um, you know, go ahead and you can use that one, right? And then, uh, actually, I think that um, Greg Maxwell has, he has a lot of great ideas, I love um, you know, the work that he's done on confidential transactions with Peterson commitments. And there's some really awesome research. I was just at Stanford at the B-Pace, which all of you should have been there. Have you, who was at B-Pace? OK, it's like the best. It's the best uh, dev conference I think the, the year that I go to. Um, but the, the talk on bullet, pr bullet range proofs was really exciting. And there are a lot of improvements made on that, right? And those are some things that actually could, I'm sure Greg Maxwell wants to include those into Bitcoin. Now the question is, Bitcoin just spent, what, like two years arguing over one megabyte versus two megabytes? <laughs> so like, if you think that they're going to get confidential transactions into Bitcoin anytime soon, I mean, uh, I, I may be, right? I mean, you, you can decide, if, you know, so, um, so that's, I don't know, that's kind of where I see the landscape right now. I mean. Um, I, I think that there's there's a lot of really cool research. There's there's Starks is a new kind of um, uh, zero knowledge proof that's from the same researchers that made ZK Starks, and it doesn't require trusted setup. So there's all kinds of things that I think the Bitcoin private team is actually really excited to embrace any you know anything that we can basically to just build a product that people like using. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm. I'm just confused about one thing. Sure. Um, so, if uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about the the Bitcoin airdrop that's going to happen. So, or when when the fork happens, if I have one Z Classic, I get one Bitcoin private. If I have one Bitcoin, I get one Bitcoin private. So, doesn't it make sense for me to take all of my Bitcoin and <laughs> convert it into Z Classic for yes. the fork because Z yes. Classic is like a hundred times less, right? And and isn't that isn't that like, <laughs> I mean, isn't this sort of unfair to the, the Bitcoin community? You're, you're kind of like, right? Like, like we're letting in Bitcoin people, but they get one one hundredth of the amount that the Z Classic one. Sucks the whole Bitcoin. Well, no, so this is, I mean, it's, it's interesting, right? Like, so the Z Classic community was, is definitely rewarded in some, you know, um, way. In, in this in this in this point, like I don't like a more proportional way, right? Right. Than this um, in this scheme, right? And, 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 and what was that the sixteen percent founders reward for the Z Classic community? Z sixteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's pretty right. So it's significant, and that's I mean, and that and that probably has a large uh, part influence on the this community growth that we're that we're seeing, right? Um, and so, like, I mean, my response to that is, is that, um, you know, if you don't like that, then you should make another coin, right? And, and if you don't, you know, you can use another coin. No, and I, like, I encourage everyone to do that, right? Fork. I mean, um, if you... Do it this Sunday at our hack and chat. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sure. Two up front and then back in the back corner. Are you sure? All the way in the front. Thank you. Uh, one more quick question. We were listening to the Zcash people a few weeks ago, and they were saying shielded transactions, 15% of all their transactions. Is that roughly the case in Z Classic also? And do you anticipate shielded transactions becoming more predominant or holding that sort of ratio? Um, I actually haven't looked at those stats. I mean, you can look on the Block Explorer of the stats. I don't know what the, the current stats are. I, I do know for, I mean, for a long time it was really small. I think that they, um, I think it was much smaller than that for a really long time, and I wouldn't be surprised if, well, I'm not going to make any speculations, but it's, it's small. Mm -hmm. And so um, we do want, as a goal, to be uh, privacy by default 
uh, in, in the long term, right? And so there's a few ways to approach that. I mean, one way is that, I, know, I mean, Zcash is actually has a lot of promising research right now with their re release coming out this year called Jub Jub and their, their sapling release. And so one of the reasons why um, these shielded transactions are not the default is because they require about 40 seconds of CPU to uh, to generate the transaction and four gigabytes of RAM, so you can't you do, can't really do it on a mobile wallet or hardware wallet. And so their new uh, technique reduces that to something like takes like maybe three to five seconds of CPU and um, and like 40 megabytes of RAM. And so that'll actually make it feasible to do shielded transactions on mobile wallets. And so there's a lot more, it, it, it seems a lot more reasonable to make a mobile wallet where now our private transactions are the default. Um, I honestly think that you may be able to use, there may be other techniques as well, like just having maybe confidential transactions, adding that, adding that into Bitcoin private as well. So you can have the ZK, Star, ZK Snark component as well as the confidential transactions. And on the, so, so we have some options. And we want to work towards privacy by default, and I'm I'm sure that's you know that's that's a goal of um, of Zcash as well, probably to not to speak for them, but I'm sure you know privacy is is part of their mission as well. Brett, would you mind grabbing that question at the very front front? Sure. sure. Yes, yes. What was uh, I don't know if you mentioned what was the uh, the snapshot for oh, yeah. Bitcoin? Okay. Yeah. Not, not 20 no. So um, the the snapshot for Bitcoin and Z Classic will be on the morning of the 28th. We didn't set a exact block height yet because that kind of, the, the target for that time will kind of vary over time. So we just want to set it at the morning of the 28th. And then as we get closer, we will announce a specific block height. Um, and, then, um, and then what happens is then the miners have to actually mine the blocks. And that's a period that it'll, it'll probably take uh, you know, somewhere between six and twelve hours, um, and we. But I think we said we put two days. We put two days on there, so that should Tark making some faces. No, no, you keep going. You're on oh, the okay, yeah. seat. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, not a very technical question, but you were on the record that you supported Segwit two X last year, so that didn't happen. So was the part that this was a way that you could bring some of those improvements over to the Bitcoin ecosystem? Or with Bitcoin Private, are you trying to improve Z Classic with some aspects of Bitcoin or the other way around? So what? Yeah, so I, I don't remember it. So, I don't remember, so I'm going to just clarify. I don't remember specifically saying I supported saying with 2x exactly, but I was a strong proponent of larger blo blocks in general. So there was this annoying political debate thing that happened that I was kind of involved with for a few years uh, where I was one of the few people that said hey I think we should have larger blocks um, and part of the reason is because um, I think that that improvement will I don't know what you call it the, the, that cha larger blocks I think would make Bitcoin more usable and that is a big part of what what I like about Bitcoin private is that, that I, I think it'll be a Bitcoin fork that developers, like all, hopefully all of you guys uh, and gals, will, will find you know, usable and something that you can build applications on and something that's really exciting. Um, you know, it just, it, for me, it's really frustrating to try to build on top of sometimes you know, Bitcoin where there are just these high transaction fees or you don't know how long. So, so yeah, so, that, so I, I, just, I do like... Um, larger blocks and I've, I've been definitely uh, thinking that that was a way for us to um, I don't know for, for it, would, it would be a good thing for Bitcoin but for the you know but obviously we, you know this is where we're at <laughs> we all know where that sort of went I have a question mm -hmm. oh, first off uh, thanks to everyone for organizing this group really nice to be guys my question is uh, and no one really talks about this but this is what's going to make you successful more long term is there any mass, um, like, I forgot what I like uh, mass adoption plans? Because at the end of the day, like, it's just going to be, as we like, just a coin. 
But what is going to make this, for instance, if we're going to go to Happy Hour Place, do you see that Great Corn Crab is going to have like vendors and so on? Well, so one of the things that is really exciting to me, right, that, that kind of blows my mind is that, um, you know, the, the growth rate of Bitcoin private from the beginning to where we are now, uh, I, I believe is way faster than the original Bitcoin, right? And, and, I, and that, that, so I think that statement was true for, for Litecoin as well. And a lot of and some you know a lot of other altcoins, but part of the reason for that is because we're able to um, use all of this infrastructure and software that took many years for people to develop and experiment with and figure out which things are good and which things are bad. For example, like Electrum, right? Like that's a really user-friendly light wallet that people like to use with Bitcoin, and people probably built hundreds of light wallets that were terrible, right? And we can now just cherry pick the one code base that like that is actually usable and people like to use, and then we just pull that into the Bitcoin private community. So our growth rate is um, you know is just so much faster, right? But that's going to kind of run out. So after we have sort of taken you know all the things that are really easy like mobile wallets and and um, you know pieces of software and block explorers and things that we like get for free, um, then there's like the question of like well where are we going? Right, and I think that's kind of the big question: is like, where are we going in this crypto economic adventure that we're all on? Right, and like, I have I have my own theories. Right, I, I mean, I'll speculate at the, with them at the bar later. If you guys <laughs> 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 come over. But, uh, is this going to be added to Ledger Anonymous? Um, like there is there is a pull request in right now to Ledger and Anonymous. I think they're a little bit busy, so they haven't merged it yet um but i you know i i want there to be obviously hardware support for bitcoin private hardware wallets are great um everyone should try them out so quick question here uh so you said hey 20 percent tax from zcash sucks i'm going to do my own thing z classic no 20 percent tax no bitcoin private has this treasury thing Oh, yeah. Where you got sixty-five thousand Bitcoin private that are given to miners based on their hash rate on Z Classic. How does this work, and how is this not a tax on the Bitcoin private community? So, I, so I don't really want to answer any questions about that. Um, <laughs> it's in your white paper. I know it's in. It's in yeah, it might be in the. Um, you know that. So because there's basically, um, you know, there, there. For, you know, there's basically incentives and things set up for Bitcoin private that I, I'm, I think I, you know, I wanted this talk to be about uh, technical and, you know, developer specific things. So I don't want to sort of range into like markets and price and speculation and things like that. Okay, then the next question is, when Zcash started, they had initial parameters set and there was a big ceremony for the initial parameters which ensured the, you know, locking of the privacy and the stuff. When you fork Z Classic, what happened to those initial parameters and did you have a ceremony? Right, so this is a, uh, it's funny, this is a, I get this question a lot, um, and uh, what's, what was amazing, this was the like amazing discovery when I was actually looked at the code, what you, what you see is that, um, that those parameters are actually not, they're not tied into uh, to, to Zcash's Genesis block specifically. So, uh, so you can just use them for a new Genesis block. So Z, Cla Z Classic and Bitcoin Private just use the exact same trusted setup that Zcash uses. Whoa! Yeah. Not going to space. So, <laughs> we're not going to space. But no, no. So, so that was like that was really the amazing because I obviously didn't have the res. I don't know if you've heard of this trusted parameter setup, but it was this whole big ceremony, and they they had like a lot of people they were hiding and driving around and burning computers <laughs> and things and um, you know I spent a lot of time and money on it that I didn't have to do and then I was like oh wait I can just use theirs it was just another thing so yeah you literally uh, so Bitcoin private will use the same ones that Z, uh, Zcash made. So, um, so Z Classic uh, was it a uh, code fork of Zcash or a chain fork I'm unclear. So Z Classic was only a fork of the code of Zcash. 
there was a new Genesis block mined for Z Classic. And so Zcash has a new Genesis block that was that's not the same as the Bitcoin Genesis block. And Z Classic also has a new uh, Genesis block. And actually, I'm gonna oh, I could brag I could brag should I brag a little bit? Yeah. Go ahead, brag. I'm gonna brag a little bit. And I, I I actually I talked to Zuku about when we launched the Genesis block, right? And then he the Zcash launch was actually delayed because they put too many characters in like a memo string in their in their Genesis block. And uh, and then I was like, oh, we just we just hashed ours and put it in. <laughs> and so anyway, so they were they were a little they were we launched on time, and they were <laughs> they were delayed a little bit. <laughs> one last question before we head to the bar. One last question for one Bitcoin private. Does anybody want a question for one Bitcoin private? Oh my God! There we go. So for earlier on, you mentioned um, trade pairings and front running. Um, I think the Questions touched on briefly from what another question asked earlier. How how actually do you propose to sort of counter people front running? Is, is merely obfuscating the identity of people who are trading it isn't going to really get you around the need for some sort of central limit order book uh, like you have done in traditional exchanges? Sure. So so inside of the central order book, if you are if you have. Um, Access to the to the order book information, right, and, and know who's placing the trades. Then you obviously have this this asymmetric asymmetric you know information that you could use to your advantage. But I'm just I'm just talking about um, you know like transactions in general. I was saying that like in you know in in the case in this hypothetical case, you know you you may be able to just notice um, patterns where you, where everyone has public access to you know the Bitcoin blockchain and there's probably all kinds of patterns right that exist on that if you know which sort of data to look at. And so I I you know I would have to assume that people have already sort of figured out ways to um, to take you know financial value from people because they're able to see this this set of public financial transactions happening all the time that you know you may want private so that you aren't concerned with, you know, not just that possibility. Is that, that, so I was just talking about the public blockchain data set in general. But, you know, that there's other, other than that, I mean, it's just, um, you know, all these other things like um, that, that companies do, a lot of companies don't want, you know, the, re the record of everyone that they do business with and some sort of transaction uh, publicly available on the blockchain for everyone. So. Congratulations, Red, on Bitcoin Private. Let's right, give it up thanks. for Red.